Hi, my name is Dr. Saif and I'm looking after COVID ICU patients in my hospital. In previous video, we talked about steroid and in this video, we will uncover salient points regarding uh, the uh, use of anticoagulant that is blood thinner in uh, COVID-19 patients. We will discuss the effectiveness for how long should we continue, what type of patient we should use anticoagulant and what is the dose, what type of agent and whether the monitoring of coagulation markers is required. So all these points I'm going to cover in this video. So be with me. Now the question number one, why do we need anticoagulants? What is the rationale to start these agents, these blood thinners? So let me tell you that these are very, very important agents after steroid and COVID-19 is a pro-inflammatory and a pro-thrombotic state with increase in fibrin, FDP, that is fibrin degradation products, fibrinogen and D-dimers. So these are the biomarkers of coagulation and if these markers are increased, they are associated with the poor outcomes such as death and disability because they can cause the thrombotic complications which can be arterial or venous and very common clinical manifestation of COVID, for example, stroke, for example, pulmonary embolism, deep venous thrombosis. Postmortem studies demonstrated the frequent evidence of microvascular thrombosis in patients with COVID-19 in various studies. The overall prevalence of venous thromboembolism in hospitalized patients with COVID-19 is estimated to be 14.1%, so almost 14% according to a meta-analysis of various studies. Now the question number two, are they effective? So answer is yes, especially in critically ill patients, the pharmacological prophylaxis can reduce the deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism to almost half without increasing the major risk of bleeding. Now the question number three, in which type of patient should we use? So the answer is, as soon as patient is admitted to hospital, the COVID-19 patient admitted to hospital, we should start the anticoagulation in a prophylactic dose. Currently, we do not know whether we should be give, giving the anticoagulant in therapeutic dose, whether if we should be using the thrombolytics, we don't have any data. So still the trials is going on and we can use only in the trial setting, all these agents in the therapeutic uh, doses or the thrombolytic agents or even antiplatelet, we do not have any, any, any recommendation so far. So for how long should we continue? This is the question number three. So the answer is as far as, as long as the patient is in hospital, we should continue the anticoagulation and the moment patient is discharged, we should stop anticoagulant ideally, ideally according to guideline, that is NIH guideline. Um, FDA says we can continue the anticoagulant in high risk group for about a month, the, the dose and the type of anticoagulant. So let me tell you, a recommended type of anticoagulant is the low molecular weight heparin in COVID-19 patient. And the dose is prophylactic dose only. That is 40 milligram once in a day subcutaneous. And uh, when we discharge the patient and if the patient comes in high risk category to develop the venous thromboembolism or any thrombotic complication, or there is a scoring for that, then we can put the patient on oral anticoagulant, 10th inhibitor such as Epixaban or Rivaroxaban. So FDA says Rivaroxaban is uh, efficacious, but the recent studies have been conducted to compare Epixaban and uh, Rivaroxaban and they found that Epixaban is associated with less chances of major bleeding and highly efficacious. Okay. It can reduce the rates of both ischemic stroke or systemic embolism, according to a study. 
a meta-analysis of registry-based studies that compared bleeding risk with apixaban versus rivaroxaban showed a 48% lower risk of bleeding with apixaban compared with the rivaroxaban. So, you should go for apixaban. Okay, if it is available, 2.5 mg BD is the dose. Now the question number 6. Whether we should monitor the coagulation parameters during anticoagulant therapy. So there are many misconceptions regarding the monitoring part. Should we really do it? If yes, then in which type of patients? What parameters and for how long? There are really so many questions and doubts we have in mind with regard to monitoring of coagulation parameters in COVID-19. Guidelines provide fuzzy recommendations. Not so clear. But there are few points. In non-hospitalized patients with COVID-19, markers of coagulopathy such as D-dimer level, prothrombin time, fibrinogen level, platelet count should not be routinely obtained according to an ICE guideline. Despite the fact that these abnormalities in these coagulation markers have been associated with worse outcomes, poor clinical outcomes, and the predictive value of these markers in the management of COVID-19 patient in deciding the dose of and, and duration of anticoagulant it not, is not so clear. The data is currently insufficient to recommend either for or against using such data, the monitoring data, to guide the management decisions. But I have seen Many protocols use D-dimer levels to adjust the dose of low molecular weight heparin and these protocols are simply based on logic but not the research. So there are so many unanswered questions like utility of therapeutic range, anticoagulation, in which type of patients fibrinolytic therapy or thrombolytic therapy should be considered, is there any role of antiplatelet therapy in such patients? So many people start Ecosprin, 75 milligram or 150 milligram dose once in a day. So that's wrong. And when should be, uh, when should be the duration of uh, prophylaxis? What should be the duration of prophylaxis? In which type of patient we should use long term or extended period uh, anticoagulant prophylaxis? So we are still not so clear about so many questions, and that's why a lot of research. A good randomized clinical trial is required to answer these uh, questions. I hope that you are now well advised and aware about the most updated information which I have shared in this video on antithrombotic therapy in patients with COVID-19. Let's save more and more lives using these wonderful medications. Thank you so much.